Hey everybody, it's Jimmy here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to play on the solo barbarian. And for today's video, we're gonna create a new character. And this new character or character, tell me which one is right in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. We're gonna play on a barbarian. We're gonna start a brand new class when we're gonna call it some sick name, like some, you know, brawny, furious angry barb nah okay angry brawny furious angry d this is the name for today's character so pretty much when you're starting out on a new barbarian there is one thing that you need to know one this class may be a little bit slow at first but two you can check out my other videos where i make this class extremely fast broken strong agile with a stupid amount of action speed combination of both just a really good class but okay uh, enough of that enough of that before the video starts i want to remind you only 3.7 percent of the people who are watching my channel has subscribed and the rest didn't if you can continue to press subscribe button i'd really really appreciate it but only if you enjoy barbarian content as that's the content that i produce produce and i like to play the most and basically that's what i'm going to play in the future and that is also one of the reasons why i'm making this guide on how to play a solo barbarian all right so pretty much this video is going to be more likely for the new player experience um for people who just recently got on steam and um, they sparked a little bit of interest to play this class well this is the class that i play a lot so pretty much first thing first when you got into the game you get to create your character you gotta put on a really sick angry name the more angry it is the better the very next thing is go to option settings very important step scroll it all the way down and um um make sure make sure you have the fucking brightness scaled all the way to three this helps a lot these are my settings for anyone curious this is a settings of a barbarian who played this game for 3000 hours i play on a barb i love barb i've been playing other classes i probably played rogue for another thousand and a half hours but uh th that just a sad class don't play it it's a waste of time it's not worth it so pretty much if anyone interested this is what my little settings looks like there's one thing that also you should do which is very freaking important and that is to turn your voice chat on make sure it's in the proximity make sure it's in the push to talk set up the settings so that you will be able to communicate in game as uh, basically this is dungeon crawler game and you get to experience interaction with other players so after we've uh, dealt with settings First thing you're gonna notice is your guy is kind of naked. He ain't got shit. Basically, this is what you're gonna see. First thing first, hop in the class. Then here you'll see the training section, perks, skills. The only thing that you're gonna have available is a two-hander. Well, at level one, this perk absolutely fucking suck. Pointless. Does nothing. Instead, you wanna pick this two perk, two two skills first. Which, because fucking rage and reckless attack level 1, who fucking wants? You want to have a savage roar and the rage. The, it, it was catching my eye so hard that uh, we're gonna talk about perks in a second. Rage will increase your move speed, while savage will scare the mobs away and also will reduce the physical damage bonus of uh, players or also mobs as well. For example, there is tier of mobs, high tier mobs that are not gonna get scared like, um, you know, mini bosses, sub bosses or some shit like that. So pretty much, okay, let's get back into the perk section. We have a lot of perks. You may have noticed me, the combination of perks that I usually play the moment I hit level 20 is going to be the Axe Specialization, the um, Iron Will. I never use Berserker. I don't like this perk. I always use Robust, I always use Potion Chugger, and almost always I use either Crush or Iron Will, it's 50-50. It depends on whether or not I play solo, or it also depends whether or not I have a high regular interaction speed. But there's so many stats to talk about. First thing first, we gotta talk about what you wanna play with when you just launch the game out. And when you just launch the game out, you wanna have this beautiful perk right freaking here. Crush. Yup, that's it. That's the one. When you ain't got shit, doesn't matter what perks you have on level 1, 5, 10, or 15. When, well, actually, at that point, yeah, it's matter. But at level 1, the crush 
is going to be better than all the perks combined together. And I'll explain you why. When you absolutely have nothing, this perk will help you make some cheese. Currently, we have no cheese, but this is what you need to work on. You gotta acquire some cheese, you gotta sell some more cheese in order to have some, you know, cheese that you could actually use. And basically, this is one of the the most important steps, especially when it comes to playing on a barb. When you start out on a barb, don't get discouraged by the battle axe. Even though the battle axe does suck dick, it's okay overall. It's, you know, you will get used to it. On top of that, the movespeed penalty that it offers isn't that bad. And if you combine it with the rage and savage roar, even at level one, you still possess threat to other players. Even if you're a new player, you still can become pretty dangerous. The downside of a barbarian is you need... it's actually the barbarian requires more skill than a rogue because you're very slow and in case, in case, if you're in a situation where you're equally geared against other rogue, missing a hit will punish you a lot more than if a rogue would miss a hit because a rogue will be able to get away and you're likely not and if you lose a decent amount of chunk of health you're likely to be punished to death and that's not something you want to have so all right there's a number of times i was asked what is the best skin you want to use on your barb and the best skin you want to use on your barb is an elf Elf or Nightmare Skeleton. One of two, they both are great. I'm not sure if you're gonna have unlocked all of these. Maybe you do, maybe you won't. But uh, that's the answer for the question that was asked a number of times. Alright, so let's go back and let's go over every single perk there is in the game. The best combination is X Specialization with the Robust. Without these two perks, Barbarian is not a Barbarian. Don't use Axe Specialization if you're playing with Burdish or Zweihander because Axe Specialization is only gonna affect Axes. It's not gonna affect um, Burdish or Zwei. There is one perk that you may notice that seems pretty good. It's decent enough, especially when you're fighting AI. It's horrible in PvP. Don't ever use it. It's a waste of slot. Now we have a Savage. This one increases your physical damage bonus by 10%. If you don't have a lot of gear, this is one of the best perks to increase your physical power. Pretty much when you headshot almost all the time once you have a blue weapon, you're going to do you're going to be doing around 100 plus damage. So pretty much the 10% physical damage bonus is going to increase your damage by 10, which is going to greatly increase Another beautiful perk there is, is a treacherous lungs. So if you have the combination of a rage with the savage roar, it's going to increase the duration of both by 50%. So, so this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna have 9 seconds of rage instead of 6. We're gonna have 9 seconds of savage roar instead of 6. So pretty much that's what we're gonna get. <laughs> Alright, we move on, we move on. We also have the potion chugger. Gain 20% increased potency towards all drinks. Now, you need to understand how broken this is. The Potion Chugger offers you increased potency while reducing the duration. So, pretty much, if you drink two potions in uh, like 10 seconds, you will be able to heal up as much as two potions that would heal you over 30 seconds. I think I was, you know, maybe, okay, let's be a little more mathematically correct, than in 25 seconds. Because, like, also it increases the potency. And because, like, it heals so much at a time, but by the time the 25 seconds runs out with the potion chugger, if you drink all the pots, like, you're gonna be literally full HP. The potion chugger is really, really underrated. Basically, even though this is a great freaking perk, there is other content creators that made it seem like this perk is not valuable. And this perk is extremely valuable. I could name all the content creators that are t telling that this perk is not good, but it is good. It is good, it's very underrated and underappreciated. The um, OG Barbarian content creators, I don't want to mention their names, but you probably already know them, does not take this, this piece. I do every time. Pretty much, this is my original build, the one that I play with, with a potion chugger. Each and every build I make has this. 
because not only it increased the potency of your red pots, it also increased your protection pots so that the moment you pop a blue pot, you can instantly rush into the fight. The blue potion is the one that gives you armor from physical damage. There is also a purple one and um, there is also luck pots. And if you drink a luck pot, you're gonna get more luck, you know, because it also increased the potency, which is makes this um, perk really freaking good. Is this an Astro perk? Probably... For me, 100%. For the majority, no, because my build relies on using throwing knives, throwing axes, kiting players around. You know, I don't fully commit. There are players like Skinny Pete who always commit into the fight, and that's why for them it's not preferable to use the potion chugger because their playstyle is relies on fully committing to a fight. They rely around playing with the berserker. While I, you know, play, while I play with my food, you know what I mean? Yes, I do get fucked by that, because, for example, let's say, if the fight is one way and there is no way to go, and if both parties are at full HP, the um, potion on chugger will not help me in that specific situation, berserker will, because you would need to fully commit, but I'd never fully commit, there's no point to fully commit, this is not an arena mod, this is not a mortal, this is a dungeon fucking hardcore experience. Like, you can get out of the fight all you want, you can run away, you can catch up, you can do all you fucking want. And especially if you're capable of getting away from players, if you're capable of landing that initial hit with the potion chugger, like, you will be able to outsource majority of the players because you will be able to heal up a lot faster than they will ever will. And that's why, for me personally, because of my playstyle that re re heavily relies on throwing axes and on keeping people at the edge um, and doing inflicting damage while gaining advantage, that's why, for me personally, the Potion of Chugger is an absolute triple S++ tier perk and I will always use it no matter freaking what. Alright, robust. Increase your 15 if increase your health by 15%. Basically, barbarian is not a barbarian without this perk. This perk offers you a 20 solid health from the start. It's a great freaking perk. The downside, no matter how much more health you're gonna get, you're not gonna get more than the original amount of health this perk has to offer. So yeah, that's the downside. So for example, if you have 200 health, like the robust not gonna give you more than you know the initial numbers that you already see here. Which I believe 21 health. Also, what else do we have? We have the Carnage, we have mm, Morale Boost. This one is pretty decent if you're playing in duos. In, and if you end up killing somebody, you will end up getting a little bit of HP back. It's so insignificant that one using one red pot before fight will, will just heal you up for the HP that you're gonna lose. You know, it's just like that. Alright, the execution I already mentioned, it's great against PvE, it's not great in PvP because there's too many other good perks. The Axe Specialization will affect your Axe, it also will affect your throwing Axes, so which is really good. The Carnage could be useful if you have a mobs chasing after you, so if you have a decent chunk of PDR, you could pop him up and turn into a fight and fight. I don't rely on this tech. This tech, it would be very good, especially if you're playing with the blood exchange, and I don't. The blood exchange... Okay, now let's get into the um, skill combinations that you can get. Because as for the perk combination, it's almost pretty much always remain the same. It's the robust, X specialization, or two-hander, or savage, or these two together if you're using uh, the axe. If you're not using axe, it's gonna be the bardish with the savage, or bardish with the two-hander. If you already have enough damage, you may don't even need those. You may as well get iron will with the robust, with crush, and for me personally, it's gonna be asked your option for, to pick the potion chugger. But uh, if you are feeling confident that you don't need to kite players around, go with berserker, it's gonna help you out. It's gonna, it could increase your maximum damage bonus up to 30% mid-fight, especially when you're very low, and that could make a drastic change. But I personally don't rely on this, because usually if I'm low HP, uh, I'm dead. <laughs> it's like, that's just how it works for me. But then here we go, we'll get to come to the skills. I gotta save up right now, and I'll be right back in a second. All right, it is time to go over the builds that currently there is for Barb. There is a variety of builds that actually very similar to each other but have a little bit of different different meaning and different purpose so if if i got it right we have probably four or five builds that currently there is in the game maybe even six builds 
but pretty much each and every one will have a different purpose. Alright, let's start with the first one, with the um, one that I always play, it's the combination of the Rage and the Savage Roar. Now usually, previously, I've been playing with Achilles Strike, up until the point I realized that I really do like the Rage, because Rage will allow you to kite players down, who may be more or less fast. But Achilles, on the other hand, is gonna give you an option to slow people down, to connect hits. So pretty much if you got in a close fight and you, you land your first Achilles strike, people are gonna be so freaking slow that pretty much you're gonna get free hits uh, for next couple of seconds, which is insane. So if you land one hit, you will be able to land at least another hit. And there is a potential to land a third hit as well, which is really freaking good. So here is two builds. The um, Achilles strike with Savage Roar or Rage with the um, Savage Roar. Here is another build. This one is a full offense build. It's very effective against rogues, wizards, warlocks, rangers. Um, pretty much it's the combination of a rage and Achilles strike. The way it works is you gotta land, you gotta throw like an Achilles strike with your Francesca axe. The, whoever is running away from you is gonna be so freaking slow they wouldn't even be able to move. Once you get close, you're gonna slow them down while you're gonna increase the speed of your barbarian which will also increase your strength, you know, wigger, move speed, and, uh, well, on the downside, you're gonna lose your physical damage reduction while enraged. So, yeah, this is a very specific type of belt. It works really well. It also works really well if you're playing with a Bardish, because you will be able to control players, more or less. Okay, so here we go. We have another build that is actually quite effective in duos. It's the Savage and the Warcry. This build is very effective if you're playing with the Bard who focusing on the PDR. And um, basically what this gonna do is gonna decrease the physical damage bonus of people you're fighting with. It also inc gonna increase the health both yourself and your allies. Combination of two makes it really freaking effective. Okay, so here more of a solo build. It's basically the rec the rage with the reckless. It's a good build, but um no, it's not a good build. It's like it's very, very, very situational. So pretty much the reckless is gonna decrease your physical damage reduction. The um reckless also gonna decrease your Okay, so pretty much the rage is gonna decrease your physical damage reduction by 20 for six seconds. While well, you have your reckless attack on, it's also going to decrease your armor, which is going to put you in negative. So pretty much in some cases you will be able to get one tap by someone who has a decent chunk of damage. Like by Hydro, you will die instantly. Reckless attack will help you against PDR users. But uh, even though it may be effective, even though sometimes you can let one tap players, it's very ineffective in the long run. And I'd rather play with something that is gonna help me in every single situation with the kill strike. And here we go, the final, final build, which is made by our all loved Skinny Pit. We all love this guy, this absolute sweat lord, boss of the dungeon, red lizard guy, who is the absolute madness in society of dark and darker. What he does is he is playing with the weirdest combination there is in the game, the weirdest perk combination, because what he plays with is arguably the biggest pile of dog shit, but somehow he makes it work. Okay, so I'm gonna first tell the perks he is playing with. It's a morale boost, which recover your health after you kill a player by 12%. Well, what I say is, if you drink a red potion, you're gonna get those 12% from one red pot, so you don't even need to kill anyone, that's why I found that a little weird that he uses, but maybe it's effective against rogues, or maybe it's effective in duos. Also, he plays with Carnage, that um, <laughs> gain you 75 armor when you kill a target. Once again, if you're playing in solo versus duo, morale boost with Carnage could be effective. Also, on top of that, he plays with Berserker. Berserker is gonna help your physical damage bonus. The less health you have, the more bo the more damage you're gonna do. I dislike this fucking ability because I don't like to fully commit to a fight, but if you do, this one gonna help you. And also, he either use Crush or Iron Will or basically one of two. I never seen him use any other perk, never seen him use Treacherous Lungs. Um, 
that said, that's just what he plays with. And now let's get back to the beautiful ability combination that he is playing with. Skinny Piet is arguably the sweatiest player there is in Dark and Darker. I would say he is the best barbarian and um, without a fucking doubt I could actually tell that he is the best barbarian in his playstyle. If I come across him, my playstyle is not gonna work as well because um, his playstyle is for full commitment. He always run on the red lizard, he always fast. The moment he gets too close, he's gonna fucking twist his head around 360 degrees and uh, I would never be able to land a hatchet on him. And pretty much it would be for me personally with my playstyle almost impossible to win him because even though if I can get ahead a by gaining, uh, by throwing daggers at him or fucking axes at him, at the end of the day he's gonna use the Achilles strike with the blood exchange which gonna recover his health. That's what he played with, that's what he is good at, you know, I'm gonna give him a credit. I'm gonna give a little shout out and link up a channel uh, to his uh, YouTube or Twitch or whatever the fuck he is streaming at. That guy is a madness and also, you know, love that guy, he is a really supportive homie, like, you know, there he has really good takes, so let it all shout out to the best uh, red lizard there is in the game. Alright, we move on. I think we already covered every single build there is currently is in the game. Any other build that you can come up with after the one that I already mentioned is going to be a complete throw. Barbarian does not have a dual wielding, but Barbarian suck dick with the horseman or hatchet. There is a better variety of options you could play with, so even though you can make it effective, but you're not gonna make it broken. So pretty much that's kinda sums it up. Alright, so I feel like I've mentioned um, the class, I've mentioned the perk skills, and now we're gonna get to the squire. Mr. Squire, hello there. So pretty much when you start out, there is few things that you wanna pick. One of them is going to be adventure boots instead of the heavy boots, because it's gonna give you dexterity. Dexterity is something that you prepare and need. Also, since um, at start, like, um, since Adventure Tunic doesn't slow you down and uh, you're not gonna really play with the Savage at start, I, I highly encourage you to pick Adventure Tunic. After that, you're gonna move on and click both on Bandage and Potion of Healing and Potion of Protection, as this is gonna give you a reasonable amount of sustenance in the dungeon. When you start out, you don't have those equipped, but so you really need to go to Squire and equip it. Then click on the Gjormundabu, I hope I pronounced it right, I think my pronunciation is right, and I did I pronounced it best to my abilities, if I got it wrong, let me know down in the comment section. This is what your barb is gonna look like, you can go fucking balls deep and also pick up the quarterstaff, which is gonna make you look kinda scary. Unfortunately, when you're starting out, you don't get to pick uh, gloves, um, and that's basically best you can pick. I'm gonna show you right now what you will be able to pick once you get the tasks done. So pretty much I will be able, um, you will be able to equip a big variety of items at your squire once you complete a number of tasks. These are the items that the squire has to offer. It's gonna have dexterity, strength, vigor, agility, anything you ask for. There is enough PDR, um, basically, you, could, you can even get a really decent PDR kits from gray items, they're gonna be quite helpful. But yeah, in order to get those things unlocked, there is one thing you need to do in particular, and that is get the tasks done. When you get the tasks done, you're getting the um, um, affinity, and this affinity is going all the way towards your the squire, which is going to increase the amount of stuff you will be able to equip. Once you complete every single freaking task there is in the game, um, you're gonna have even more available stuff than I currently have. There is one pair of boots I've noticed that I have physically have never seen in the game, and this is this pair of boots. I don't believe this pair of boots even exist, but uh, you could actually get it from the Squire, which is kind of new to me. If you got some of the tasks unlocked, this is the build that you would want to go with. 
when you're starting out, you don't have much dexterity. And dexterity is going to be arguably the most important attribute on your barb, especially when you're starting out. So pretty much, this is what we're going to pick. We're going to pick Adventure Boots. We're going to pick Battle Axe of White Quality. And we're going to move on to um, something that offers us even more dexterity. It's going to be either Grand Brigandine or... Uh, Northern Full Tunic, if we have it unlocked, which we do. Yes. Then we're gonna move on to the helmet, which is gonna give us more dexterity. There is one in particular that does that, and it does it pretty well. It's a Wizard Salad. So pretty much this is what our barb would look like, if we would have uh, enough stuff unlocked. Alright, so... Basically, this is, would be the stats. Just with this stats alone, your action speed is going to be positive. Without this, you, you, it, would, it wouldn't be. And right now, you would be at 90% physical damage reduction. And if you would have a skeleton skin, you're going to be at 22, which is quite a lot. Anyway, let's go back to our guy right here. Brownie, Furious, Angry D. <laughs> okay, so I feel like I already covered Squire, Skills, Perks. And now we just got to test our build in action. We got to hop in the game. And we gotta play one early game, the one the, that you would experience yourself when you just first start out on a barbarian. I'm gonna showcase you what exactly you need to do in order to gain a kickstart um, on your journey on a barbarian. We're gonna wait out until we got the goblin caves. Goblin caves and frost mountains, these two are my favorite maps, but I still prefer goblin caves because it's way more convenient for solo players and the goblin cave map is made for solos while these maps are not really all right so goblin caves is here we're gonna hop in directly and we're gonna clap some cheeks currently currently you can bring into the raid every single piece of gear so no matter what you bring um you will be able to actually use it unlike um in um, other games we're gonna play it with one little exception that not only we're gonna try to find some upgrades, also, also, we will try to take every single PvP fight face on as a little challenge to spy things up a little bit. Even though I don't have a single thing that could possibly benefit me, and in fact, I'm also running the wrong fucking build, which isn't what I would usually play with. Fuck, where is my savage drawer? But it's okay. We're gonna play with this comp, which is actually quite effective against uh, rogues, which we have plenty, and I feel like it's okay, we could still win and do pretty well with this. This probably could be a pr quite a decent example of what you can do with this build, but um, this build usually not as common, and you're gonna have a lot less stats compared to the one with the Savage Roar. But anyway, without further ado, let's just wait it out and hop into the game directly to get our first cheese, upgrade our barb, level it up a little bit, and hopefully we'd be able to find some good cheese to showcase um, the normals. Right after this one though, I'm thinking to go to play on my main with more or less decent gear, and after playing normals in this class, we're gonna hop in and showcase the build that I'm gonna be running, but in the high roller, in Solus. Chances are I get fucked pretty high, just because I haven't really played High Roller Solus in quite a bit. <laughs> I've been a duo enjoyer for a couple of days. But um, other than that, other than that, like, I still believe I'm, I'm gonna do just fine, um, no matter what gear I'm gonna bring in with in the High Roller. Alright, we are in. By the way, we spawn in one of the best places you can spawn on a Barbarian. And we're gonna abuse the absolute fuck out of this because you get to break every single box and with every single box you will be able to acquire some cheese. Don't get hurt by the gas because it does fucking hurt. Basically, if you have any gaming experience you'll probably realize that, um, you know, sniffing farts isn't something you wanna do because it's definitely not gonna be healthy. We found our first upgrade which is a little bit of wigger. And um, that's pretty much gonna give us a little bit of cheese. Uh, Wigger gives you health, and that's definitely something you don't want to sleep on. We got our second upgrade, which is the helmet. Now we're actually kind of feeling it. 
We're gonna pick up every single item that we find because that's definitely something that's gonna help us a lot in the long run. Okay, we got a pot, which is gonna be helpful for the task. We don't need more than one, so we're gonna throw the one of a low quality. Um, if you're doing tasks, if you're focusing on doing tasks, by the way, here we have another piece. Also, you know, you need um, each and every quality found in rate. And, well, not each and every quality. You, you gotta have one of each, one red, one white, and one blue, and you will be able to finish the task. Um, when you start out, I do highly encourage you to um, um, first equip everything you find, because it's just gonna be better. And uh, two, of stockpile all the items that you find, because it's also gonna be very helpful. For a very, very simple reason. Um, because uh, even if you, for example, wouldn't find enough of the right items, enough of the right attributes, you still will be able to make some profit at the end of the day. By the way, I found the campfire. You need five of those early on. It's going to be very, very freaking helpful. We got Lightfoot boots. We have Bardic pants. Fuck Bardic pants. We're not Bard. We're not playing this tr this class. We're playing on the... <laughs> We're playing in a bar. So, yeah. I was, ab I was about to act a little bit silly, but uh, yeah, no need to be too silly, you know what I mean? Today is educational video, and we are basically going over the steps that you probably um, would have to go over when you're starting out. One little cool thing, though, you could do is you could actually take the lantern and lighten things up. That's probably an obvious thing, but, um, well... A lot of people, for example, don't even care to use Lantern. Also, you're gonna run at maximum speed with it in your hands. Boom! We're gonna smack those things one step at a time. We're gonna break every single box, every single chest, everything we see, because we are motherfucking barb. Pretty much when you see little items on the floor, you should replace them because they offer more volume. Throwing knives, on the other hand, of a better quality could be sold for a better chunk of money, especially if you come across of it. Right now, the barrels drop better loot, so you should pick them up. If you come across the ancient scroll and if you're looking to do tasks, you should pick them up because at the end of the day, um, that's gonna help you get the task done. You need two of these and a um, couple more later down the line, which those tasks haven't been unlocked yet, but they're going to be unlocked eventually. We got a, a, our first blue weapon, Stiletto. Unfortunately, we can't use it. It has one additional weapon damage. This piece here costs around 300 gold in market. Uh, if you bought the game, you will be able to sell it for quite a, quite a high price, which is a big step right here. This one piece will be able, you, you, you will be able to sell in market and get an upgrade, um, you know, for your future runs. If you come across enough silver coins, keep in mind you need 300 of those for a task, so you should stack them up. Alright, we move on. Here we have three more barrels. We have two skeletons, one right in front, one at barrels. And basically, skeletons is also is part of the task that you need to do. So don't get surprised. Just get it done, get it over with. We found the dashing boots with one and a half move speed. That's our first good upgrade as they will increase our move speed slightly more than Lightfoot Boots will. That's what we're gonna stick with. Alright, break the barrels, let's see what we get. We ain't got shit here, but that's okay. Barrels take a little more effort to break, unless you have a bird dish. With bird dish you will one-shot them, one hit it per barrel. Um, we found Adventure Boots of... Um, white quality, but I don't think we care too much. The difference between opening and breaking is actually quite ridiculous. Just keep in mind how long it took me and let's see how fast I will be able to break. By the way, I just heard the troll right below, I mean Cyclops. Seems like someone is actually trying to get the Cyclops done. We could interfere or we could move on and let the guy finish the job or die, as you can clearly see what actually just happened to him. The guy tried his best, but unfortunately, the power of Cyclops is unmatched, and he got absolutely clapped by that Cyclops. We have an explosive bottle, you need five of those for a task, so yeah. We got our item, which is a sellable, which is of green quality. Green quality sellable is gonna cost some money, don't sleep on those. 
Here we have a usual mob that dies to a trap, so don't get surprised, no one has been here. Alright, fuck this mob, mob dies. We take it, we have our first beautiful freaking upgrade, Felon Axe. And oh boy, let me tell you something about it. With the Felon Axe, that's a completely fucking different story. You start chopping heads with this bad boy. This fucking little bitch in your hands is just gonna become an absolute menace in the dungeon. That definitely is the weapon that you want to look for. I like it a lot more than I like Battle Axe. We have a green quality adventure boots and that's definitely not a bad piece. We're gonna have it. It's gonna increase our action speed by a good chunky bit by a solid 3%. Not bad. Definitely not bad. Um, let's see what else. So you do want to find, you do want to take better quality items. Better quality items, more money, more money, more upgrades. So pretty much I hope you follow the logic here. The more stuff you're gonna bring out, the more money you're gonna make, the more money you're gonna make, the more upgrades you will have in the near future. The goblet, the green goblet. Definitely we, we can start throwing stuff already on the floor because that's money. Usually the gold doesn't um, really bring you as much value as if you find green items. So first thing first, I encourage you to find green uh, sellables. We have an ale. You, you will need it for a task. Here, for example, we have the bronze chest. The bronze chest is usually money. This time it wasn't. This is what it looks like. It looks slightly different. All right. We're going to open it up. Here we go. Okay. This is one of the main rooms in um, Goblins. It's one of the... Um, also really great rooms to make money you can f you just simply come here and mine cobalt it can possess some threat to stay here but if you're cautious enough you could do it quite effortlessly um the thing is though this allocation where we're at is literally the middle of the map of the goblins and pretty much everyone is going to be here we found our little upgrade it's going to be the horseman axe i like it more than battle axe but battle, battle axe at the end of the day isn't that bad, especially if you're used to it. Here we found the um, leather gloves. I like them more than I like um, the gloves of utility. But the glove utility that we got offers us additional one damage. But uh, so that's why we kind of want to stick with it. We're gonna try and get some cheese as much as we could get. We have some luck here, but we don't care too much about luck. One of the things that I didn't mention, there is two bosses on this map. One of the boss, which we can find, is going to be very close down to the southeast from the middle of the map. You're gonna stumble across two mobs. Basically, you have a little location with the ledge, which you could jump on, by the way. And in fact, if you're interested, I can show you right now. There is two ways that you can get there. One of them is right here. Um, pretty much... With a couple of jumps, you will be able to get there somehow. I haven't done it in a while, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was like one of the ways... Shit, I wish I could remember how to get there. Okay, maybe I'm tripping. <laughs> mm, you used to... Usually you were able to get there somehow, but okay, there is one way to get there with ease, and that's by getting on this... Um, ways do one little jump here and another one and that's it you're up here pretty much if you're interested to rat people out a little bit this is one of the coolest places where you could do that now we're gonna come across the boss that usually a lot of content creators don't really cover but i feel like it's not gonna be a bad idea to try and fuck with the boss for a little bit i'm not sure if i'm gonna have enough time to kill it but how about i go and give it a try five minutes at the end of the day is a five minutes it's quite a lot Okay, once we get in, we are not gonna have too much health. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw my adventure to him. This is actually very fucking risky, in fact. Okay, he does one attack, you do smash. He does another attack, you do smash. Third attack, you do smash. This is what I would do. I would try to bait oh, the guy to roar. That would be my best bet to actually kill him. Because otherwise it's going to be a lot harder to land headshots. We got another headshot down. He does a roar, which is great for us. We're going to walk away. He does this thing. We're going to give him arm head. Just simply walk to the left. We're going to stay here until he starts screaming. He doesn't want to scream. Piece of shit. 
Okay. This time we better wait. We better wait this time. Nope. It does a slam. When it does big slam, it can kill you, so stay away from it. Okay, we're gonna wait our loud. This guy is literally unhinged, he doesn't give a shit. He keeps swinging his fucking hammer. This is not what we wanna do. We're gonna get close, smack him in the head. Repeat the process. One more smack. You're gonna wait it out. Okay, finally he does the right attack. This is the attack we we're looking for. Because the arm hit doesn't do much damage. And basically you repeat the process. Now he does scream, which is what we're looking for. We walk away. He does another one. We hit him in the head. Okay, he does another one. We hit him in the head again. One step at a time, nothing crazy. We wait, he's gonna roar, which is good for us. We're gonna walk away. We're gonna stay here. Maybe, hopefully, he'll roar. If he wouldn't, that's fine. We miss our hits in the head, but that's also kind of fine. We stay here, he's roar. Every time he roars, he's gonna reset his attack animation, which is good for us. Every time he hits the slam, you headshot. The headshot is what you're looking for. That would be the fastest way to get the troll down. Okay, we walk away from here. He didn't roar, but that's okay. Okay, now he does roar, which is great. We give a headshot. We give arm shot. We just wait now. We give roar. He doesn't roar. Bitch. Hopefully he does. Right now he does. We're also gonna reset him. Okay, one little more hit. Okay, we're gonna wait for a little bit. You have only two freaking minutes left. I really hope I will be able to get him in time. We got him, bro! Fuck yeah, let's fucking go! Down there, there is a treasure room. We only have minute 40. We got an upgrade, we got a quarter stuff. Biss. Biss, biss, biss. Hell yeah. We can go run there quickly. We have only 1 minute and 30 seconds, which usually isn't that much. But you don't need more than 1 minute to get away. We have a gold pile right here. We also have a marvelous chest. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to quickly root, loot it up and find some good cheese right here. Oh, holy cow. This. Mm, we got more syllables. Okay, we have only one minute left. Hopefully we will be able to make it in time. Um, we're gonna run here to the left. The moment you leave the room, we're gonna go upstairs. Here we're gonna have here elevator to your left directly. You're gonna use it. Do a little jump to boost you up. Run down north. Break the door. Come here. Break another door. Use roar. Run. Don't stop. Don't look back. Nothing is gonna bother you. It's okay. Keep running. You got this. Mobs isn't of your concern. You're almost there. We got to the static, we have 20 seconds, we're freaking good. And we got out. <laughs> okay, I hope I covered a lot of things that you could have encountered as a soul barbarian. Also, I probably just did something that um, you wouldn't see in any guide. There is no guide there is on a barb uh, on how to kill a troll with the Fallen Axe. But it's not going to be about the troll, it's going to be on just an, an average, like in general, what you can do on the barb it was kind of easy once you level up we got to level six if you're gonna play with spell and axe you got to have axe specialization which is absolutely best if you want to focus on boss farming as a barb with the fell and axe you could use the combination of axe specialization and the savage which will increase your damage by a lot later down the line once you hit level 10 you can get to have another perk which is going to be two-hander which will increase your physical damage bonus by additional 5, which is really freaking good. You would be at 19%, and if you want to go absolutely crazy, you can pick the orc skin, which will further down increase your physical power 
and you're gonna be in the complete madness. 16% plus 5, like you're already fast enough, you already do plenty of damage with the Rage, with the Felon Axe, doing bosses is gonna be a complete piece of cake. So pretty much I hope it was a um, decent summary for what you can do on the level 1 barb. Um, I think I already summarized the builds, the variety of builds that you can run. And I feel like it's not going to be a bad idea if we're going to hop in into the high roller on my main class. But before we do that, let's actually check out how much we were able to make based on of sellables. Just to see what you will be able to afford by selling those. Also, also, I mentioned previously that you could make money, some money by selling the stiletto. And let's actually check out how much we would make off of stiletto if we try and sell it. As for now, we're gonna sell every single piece just so that we get to see how much we made. Okay, so we sold this here. And unfortunately, I have a fucking gold coin back and the gold that I just fucking sold went into my secondary stash. <laughs> Alright, but I think I made like around 300 gold. I do apologize that um, I didn't prepare my secondary stash, but I think overall it kind of shows the point. So you still can make 300 gold. I brought out a bunch of um, items, including the purple barbuta helmet, which is probably going to be around another couple hundred. Felon axe, which I would usually play with. I absolutely love this weapon. A quarter stuff if you want to be a little faster, but it does a lot less damage. And um, But the stats this one has to offer is really good. Also, I have a loot, which is a little bit of money as well on top. But as for now, I want to hop in in my main character or any character that you want to hop in and check the price out on the stiletto that we just found. As a little reference, we're going to hop in and look for the blue stiletto of rare quality with additional weapon damage. So, and pretty much here we have the one at 125 gold. So that would be additional 125 gold, which we're gonna put out on market right here. 123, we're cheap ass, we're trying to make as much gold. And basically this is exactly what we are doing. I think the stiletto would be sold within just a matter of seconds. I feel like it's gonna be really fast because people who play rogue, they do value stiletto. It's one of the best weapons there is. It's definitely something that... Uh, any rogue really likes to play with it. By the way, if you're curious how did I acquire the Cobalt Powder, you can see that none of them has looted status, which means I bought them. Every single piece right here I bought, I didn't craft anything like. I just, um, other than this piece which I got from a task. The whole thing, everything here I bought. None of this I crafted. Maybe one centaur tail, which is right here, I found in the stash. As for the rest, I found, I bought it straight up. Like, um... When you make a decent amount of chunk of gold, you want to invest this gold somewhere, especially in those items that are going to be quite uh, pricey at some point. And that's basically something that you may consider, especially if you want to get into the mid-wipe mid, mid -wipe and um, have a decent chunk of stuff that you could sell for additional gold. Basically, I bought this cobalt powder at a cost of around 60 to 70 gold for 5 pieces, which costed me like around... Um, well, I spent around 60 to 70 gold for 5, which is like 12 to 13, because early on, the Cobalt had absolutely no value. That's basically another little tip that you could use. Let's see how much Cobalt ore. 5 pieces, 100 gold. Let's see how much the Cobalt powder. It's 265 for 5, so I think I did like maybe 3 to 4 times profit um, from the Cobalt powder that I previously bought. I'm not gonna really care too much about like, you know, while you're good, like, you know, on goods. Uh, I have a lot of homies who have like fucking 10 times more than I currently do. And uh, mainly, mainly because I don't grind the game uh, overly competitive. I'm, I kind of chill, you know, most of the time. And I do prefer playing with a budget gear, with a budget set, while not caring too much about what I have. But I do still invest a little bit of cheese so that I'd have uh, some money for my future bills because that's what I main or that's what I base my channel on on different variety of builds Anyway, anyway, I feel like we did a pretty good job on uh, Playing on the barb and I feel like it's gonna be time to go into the high roller in the goblin caves on our main barbarian Because you can't go on the level 6 barb in the high roller and that would suck. We would prepare a little bit of gear set. I actually have so much gear right now. 
that we could just use any of that to showcase you the experience of a barbarian. Let's quickly sell what we have so that we'll be able to equip better stuff. Not really selling this, basically we're giving back the stuff we got from the squire which you get for absolute free. <laughs> Alright, so I just quickly threw a little gear set so that we'd go and play a high roller. Don't get me wrong, I just threw a bunch of random pile of... Not garbage, but a kind of garbage. Like, <laughs> like I'm slow, I don't do much, but I'm a freaking barbarian with bird dish, and that's definitely something you don't want to mess around with. Holy fuck, this guy is so geared. 100... Yo! This is the build I recently made, but I made a budget version. Now this guy is doing the absolute pig version. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are finally in. Quite excited to test this little bird dish out. I haven't touched bird dish in quite a while. But the beauty of bird dish is that you're gonna stomp on mobs. I have a total of 180 health. I have a 305 move speed with bird dish. I'm gonna be slow as fuck. I don't have much physical damage reduction, but overall I feel confident that I will be able to roll some PDR fighters and basically we just gotta find some. I'm not sure if I will be able to roll that one motherfucker, but like that guy was just an absolute monster. That was just ridiculous. His gear set was just straight up not fair. Bro, I got hit by this death skull while talking. What annoying shit. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. Detective Demo searching for players. This is how you should search for players. Usually, usually, um, no matter which direction you're gonna pick, you're gonna encounter players. Whether it's um, northwest, north uh, east, does not matter. Pretty much, we have a player spawn at each and every corner. And by the way, I just heard someone right below, and without a fucking further ado, let's jump fucking balls deep and try to fuck with whoever that is here. Alright, that is my friend the bard. What's the bard doing? We basically gotta figure out what he's up to. Well, first thing first, this guy has 50% PDR. Scary, by the way. And also, I'm gonna make sure that I do a little bit of damage to him. Okay, just use my torch tech. Okay, almost got fucked. Another good headshot. He is one shot away from dying. And we kill bard. This guy was... Uh, 50% PDR, 140 or 150 health bard with all the songs out, oh boy, he's definitely not a joke. This guy possesses a lot of threat. Usually bards counter barbs, but it doesn't change the fact that barbarian still can kill bards at rare occasion, but this wasn't supposed to be the occasion where I should have killed him, because I'm fucking wearing extreme budget and this guy isn't. Alright, I went up the elevator and basically... There is one thing I have decided, that's uh, go on the order layer, which is the second one next to the edge of the map, which is very close to the middle, and try and spot someone. Usually I'd like to check the um, static and the prison spawn, because it's very close to the um, um, static or extract. Basically, up until this point, where I realized there is a dead mob, and there is a freaking player. This is a PDR fighter with the um, heater shield. The PDR fighter with the heater shield is your natural counter, and especially a guy with survival bow. This guy wasn't though. His aim is S, and I'm kind of surprised that he was not really missing any hits. But overall, it's okay. It's not really that big of a deal. I slapped him a couple of times. I poke him directly in the face. He was not happy about it. After I popped him a couple of times, I decided to heal up because I remember what I said um, in the build, why do I use potion chugger? Because it's gonna heal me really freaking fast. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a quick torch tag to be able to stop him without the first animation. I probably should make a full video on it, but it's really not that complex. Just throw and hit with your bird dish. Because I had to use a potion, the um, torch tag was cancelled, and basically that the downside. I hit him one more time, and... Wait, why the fuck did he die though? <laughs> I thought he was more tankier than that, holy fuck. I got carried away, was not counting how much health he got left. I thought he got a little more force, 
and yeah, that was... <laughs> I thought I would have to hit him at least three more times, bro. Holy fuck, I got carried away. After losing the fighter, I was circled the map five times over. I couldn't find absolutely anyone, and I decided that how about I just go and tag a static. I already killed a PDR board, and I already killed a PDR fighter. So, it's not a bad raid at the end of the day, and I might as well take the W and extract. Cause you don't need to be greedy, especially when you already killed your counters. A really good bard, or just not really good, just a bard player is your natural counter, because they will be able to kite you around, like, hold you on the leash, and until you die. And basically the fighter just have way too much health, and they just gonna cock you. And that's why, you know, usually I would kind of <laughs> stay away from those classes. But not this time. Today, we gotta test out... I just fucking messed up. Today, <laughs> I had to prove that the Barbarian is not made out of paper, and you can actually take fights head-on if you put a little bit of effort and thought into it. Pretty much I tried to find as many people as I could and I went to static. There is one thing though I'm genuinely surprised is how many people there was left in the lobby. There is one this monster, the video that literally made 75 PDRs, 160 health, unkillable monster. That's the guy that you don't want to mess with if you're a barb at any fucking point. It's just a death. You need to be a three times barbarian to be able to deal with that kind of guy. Anyway, basically, I feel like our first high roller game was pretty good, and we can come up to the video conclusion. Alright, I think we can conclude the video here. So pretty much we played both normals and the high roller, we fought some PDR fighters, we fought a bard, and um, unfortunately we wasn't able to find the absolute juicers, but that is okay, because uh, pretty much this video was made to summarize the barbarian experience that are, you're likely going to have starting from level 1, um, just by simply following the steps of breaking everything you see, the true barbarian past, the true barbarian way, this is the way, <laughs> and basically you just acquire a decent chunk of gold, and then from there you move on, one by step by step, you know, one step at a time, you gear up, you get cheese, um, you get better at the game, you progress uh, by learning how to play, how to keep the distance, the, all depends on your weapon. If it's felling, you gotta hug people tighter. <laughs> if it's Bardish, you gotta control um, the distance, learn the little tack that uh, I suggest you to learn by throwing a torch. This is um, like maybe it's a bug, maybe it's abuse, but it's been there for a year and uh, it's been reported. And um, I'm pretty sure developers know it. And basically, after I reported this bug, I asked developers to not remove it. And it's basically been for, I know, for all, like a year straight up. And it's thing still exists there. It's still there. People s still don't use it. <laughs> and I hope you guys could learn something from this video, especially if you're a barbarian player. And with this, the video comes to an end. There is one very important thing that I wanted to mention is no matter what you do, make sure you have fun. Take your time, learn stuff with your own pace. There's no need to rush things. The most important thing you can have in the game is to have fun. And if you're having fun, you're doing absolutely the right thing. As for the rest, you can watch my videos and you can learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, it's Demo, I play Barb. And if you enjoy Barbarian content, consider press the subscribe button, because that's what I play and enjoy the most.